Good morning. morning. We had a, another wonderful breakfast at our guest house. And this time, instead of roti and sambal, they made us hoppers, but not the string hoppers that we had last time. These were more like a very thin crepe. And then at the bottom, it was interesting because it was thicker. And to me, it reminded me more of the consistency of a crumpet. And as you can hear, we're walking by a barking dog. Who's very, very cute, but it seems like he doesn't want us here. So we're gonna just try and quickly move on. But no, the hopper was absolutely delicious. The, it was kind of an interesting flavor though, because the outside almost tasted like bacon. Yeah, it was really flavorful. I thought when we got it, based on how it looked, it was going to be plain. Yeah. So yeah, just a really, really interesting set of flavors. And then we also had a couple of other bits that we never tried before. So Oh yeah, yeah those cookie things. Yeah. I think one of them was more like shredded coconut made into a cake because it was mm. kind of spongy. Yes. And then the other one seemingly was more of like a hard biscuit with sugar on top, mm -hmm. but it had a coconut flavor. So maybe that was made from like coconut flour. Yeah, possibly. But all of it was absolutely divine. And again, all washed down with a lovely pot of pie tea. So now we are headed to the Sigaria Rock Fortress, also known as Lion's Rock. Apparently it's close enough for us to walk. So we're going to do that, then hike up, then give you some views from the top. We should be getting our steps in because to walk there, I think it's going to take us nearly 40 minutes. Yep. And then when you add in walking up and then walking back, we'll have walked off all of the delicious breakfast we just ate. Exactly. So being healthy and touristing at the same time, ideal combo. just bought the ticket for Sigaria Rock. They were 30 US dollars each. And just so you know, there is a specific foreigner entrance that you should look for on Google Maps. And then when you arrive, you need to come to the museum to buy the tickets because what they advertise as the ticket office is just for the locals. Welcome to yet another UNESCO World Heritage Site, Sigaria Rock Fortress. Time for a big hike. Here we go. According to legend, the Sigaria area was a massive forest that became a hill following multiple storms and landslides over time. During the 5th century AD, King Kashipa selected Sigaria as his capital and built a palace which is the now famous Sigaria Rock Fortress. That's going to be us soon going up those spiral stairs. This is how Lion's Rock got its name. There are huge lion paws that sit about halfway up the rock that make up this gateway here to go all the way up to the top. ascend the many man-made stairs that make up this climb, you are treated to yet more spectacular views of the surrounding Sri Lankan countryside, including Pitarangala Rock, which we saw yesterday, as well as the remains of the ancient fort itself. Be warned though, for it does get rather windy up there, so hold on to your hats, and sunglasses, and water bottles, and food so the monkeys don't steal them. <laughs>
what was up that spiral staircase was something we were not allowed to film nor photograph, but it was actually of 1600 year old cave paintings, which were beautiful. There weren't many of them still left, unfortunately, but of what was left, it was incredibly vivid and beautifully detailed. So yeah, nice little extra stop that I personally hadn't accounted for along the trip. And now we're heading back down. made it back down which was considerably easier than the walk up not that that was bad at all these were all man-made stairs as opposed to yesterday when it was more hiking and bouldering and now we're walking along the main road to get back to our guest house yeah i'd say that the climb actually was pretty easy especially considering the fact that we did do pedrangular yesterday I think the only slight challenge for me personally was just the aspect of where to go. Because um, yeah, the stairs looked a lot more rickety than I think they were. That had me going for a sec, but I think all things considered, like once you get to the top, you kind of just forget all about it and just love the view. It was pretty special. I would say that it was a nice way to spend a day. But is it really 30 US dollars per person's worth of enjoyment and a hike? I'm not sure. Like considering the fact that that cost more individually than the Taj Mahal and a bunch of other amazing sites that we've already gone and seen on our world travels so far, it just felt like that was a bit too much. Yeah, I felt like we got incredible views yesterday at Pitarangula Rock that were just as good, if not better, because we could actually see Lion's Rock from there. And the cave paintings here are minimal and not that well maintained. And if you've been to Dambola, this is just not impressive. I don't think it was worth the 30 US dollars having done those other two things. But as Nick said, still a great way to spend three hours. I don't regret going. I'm just trying to save you money in the future. Absolutely. If it came down to it and you had to choose between that and Pitarangula, definitely go for Pitarangula every time. And make sure you do stop in Dambola to see the cave temples for sure. Yep, absolutely. We're going to walk the rest of the way back to our guest house and chill for a bit before we go up for lunch. got a king coconut. We're not typically fans of coconut water back home, but we're hoping this might be a little bit different. Considering it is 200 rupees, so just under a dollar, we figured, why not? Here it goes. I'll tell you what, it's not bad. Let's see how this tastes. It's so much sweeter than the ones back home. Yeah, I actually like this. We've come back to Coconut Shades restaurant for lunch today, but we've gone for something a little different since we figured having the same thing three times in a row was probably a little much. We just finished yet another delicious lunch at Coconut Shades restaurant. We decided to change it up a little bit this time. So instead of rice with six curries, we got roti with three curries, but we were worried that it wouldn't be enough. The waiter that we've had the whole time we've gone there, he might be the owner. I think he is, because he also does some cooking as well. He offered to add an additional curry and in the end also an additional roti. And he charged us just like one and a half times the price yeah. instead of making us buy two full meals. Yeah. And honestly, the flavor was again, absolutely second to none. It's kind of interesting because we had like three of our absolute favorites included. So we had the dal curry, we had the pumpkin, and then we had the cucumber. And then he also threw in like a new one as well, which was pineapple and aubergine. Which is a weird flavor combination, but it worked so well. Oh my that Lord. was like another one of our favorites. Another beautiful dimension to Sri Lankan cuisine. And then we had a lovely conversation as we were settling up and. He's followed us, we followed him, and 
yeah, it's sort of worked out really, really nicely. If you guys are in the Sigaria area, you have to go and support this restaurant. Absolutely. Lovely people and phenomenal food for good prices. So what's not to love? Exactly. We're just walking back to the guest house at the moment, but we don't have anything else planned for today. So until the next time, take care. And keep smiling. And then the kind of middle bit, which you get to, is quite thick and almost has like a crumpet-like consistency. I said that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there was one that was more like a cake, and I think it was like a coconut flour cake. And then the biscuit one, it was... No. <laughs> so healthy and tourism. Mm, yeah. <laughs>